On today's episode, I'm gonna explain and show to you how and why the Line 6 Pod really sucks. It's one of the worst things ever made. Let's get to it. In 1998, Line 6 launches the pod and sells around 3,000 units per month, and eventually they sold millions of their amps and this unit. It's pretty wild to have one here. Here's one in the bag. We don't have a he has the bag jingle, maybe one day. He has the bag. So here's the rules, here's what we're gonna do. This is one of the most crapped upon things in modern guitar. People swear it's horrible, that it can't sound good, but those sales numbers and the tech inside of it and the team that work on it, that defies that logic. This is an amazingly brilliant product. Marcus Ryle, the main developer, the guy's a genius. And this started a lot of stuff that never existed. So much so that the later 4x4 units, like the DL4, FM4, MM4, all these guys, they came directly from this tech. So people love those, the crap on this. So something's wrong there. Here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna give myself two minutes. We're gonna plug up. We're gonna write a jam and pick a sound out and make it work and see if this sounds good on the fly, in a hurry. Can I make good music with this, yes or no? Let's go. This first jam, the setting is really simple. I went to the black panel, so that's a Fender black face. Uh, Fender Bassman is one of my favorite amps, so it's probably in that genre of amp. And then I went to the 410 setting. You can switch different cabs here, 212s, 410s, whatever, 112. I added a little bit of reverb, and I have the delay with compressor setting, and you can tweak that by, there's all kinds of secondary controls. Just hold the tap control, and then this becomes like delay repeat, delay mix. It's super versatile if you just learn it, read the menu, you know, there's a PDF online. You can download that and learn stuff. Let's see what it sounds like. but I feel like I think that I know that I'm ready to go on tour with like Keith Urban, Wallflowers, whatever. Keith Urban actually used one of these for a while. I guess it's just too bad for people to really use though. There's no way these sound good. What we just heard is probably not even real. Let's move on. This next one, I'm gonna go to a setting that should be forbidden. Like it should be deleted from this because it's so sacrilegious. It's called Fuzzbox. So yeah, line six, sure. You're gonna make a digital fuzz. Yeah, that's not possible. Is it? We'll see. Fuzz box, 212 cab, a little bit of reverb. I'm gonna do quarter note delay, like I use on everything anyway. And uh, let's see how this fuzz is up. Cause there's no way digital can do fuzz tones. It's absolutely impossible. <laughs> Pretty good tone. I mean, I could play for Dire Straits with that. Probably jam with Andy Timmons. I don't know, but it's digital. There's no way it really sounded good. I'm just fooling myself, you know. Nick, that didn't sound good, did it? Nah. Nah, it didn't sound good because it's a, it's the kidney bean. It's the bean pod. Like this can't sound good, right? Any Addison? There's no way. No. Sounds like crap. Sounds horrible. This thing really sucks. All right, let's move on. Now, this is the final jam here to determine if this piece of trash is worth checking out, you know? Cause you tried it back in the day, you hated it, right? Cause people said it sucked. 
And then if you're a younger person, you've heard of this and you're like, this thing sucks, give me the helix. Something like that. I hear you, but here's the thing. Let's try something that's really hard to do. It's a multi-layered sound. It's my favorite sound, it's shoegaze. So I wanna create a big, huge ambient sound that lets the clean attack come through. So chorus delay, a la Memory Man, a lot of reverb. Now I'm gonna go to the British classic amp. So that's gonna be a Marshall style thing. And I'm gonna do the 412 cab. And we're gonna see if we can mimic some slow dive kind of vibes, big shoegaze. There's no way this will ever work because you need those analog pedals. You need memory men, you need real amps. This is stupid. Why are we doing this? Move on. Just do the jam, get it over with. It's hard to admit that it sounded good, I know. It hurts you, doesn't it? it? Like breaks your little heart. It's fine. I mean, two minutes for each setting here. This is a really cool unit. I feel like I could do a hundred jams with this. It sounds good. I'm running mono, cause I like mono. Some people go stereo, say it even makes it sound better. I don't know, don't really care about that. But it's pretty crazy. And here's the bottom line. Line six did this stuff before anybody. People had tried DSP, but Marcus Ryle is a genius. And when this came out, no one had ever taken digital and made it feel right. He's incredible. He invented ADAP, come on. The guy's like literally a genius. So the other people involved here, line six at this time, they go on to do this series. But the people that start walking through the door right as the pod is released, you have George Trips. He shuts down way huge says whatever, not doing this anymore, joins line six. You have Terry Burton who created Strymon and is now part of Maris along with Angelo, both of those. It's insane. The people involved in this knew what they were doing and this stuff sounds really good whether you like it or not. That's really the moral of this story. And um, I'm not heartbroken about it. Let me know how you feel about this in the comments. If you ever played with a pod, let me know if you liked it. Why did you get rid of the pod? Let's examine our hearts and just see if maybe some of this old gear that people says sucks is actually pretty good and you could still use it. I don't know. Maybe we'll do a pocket pod episode. Yeah? Yeah. Look, it's got a little belt clip. So cute. All right, let's go to record time. Today's record time is brought to you by 2004's How to Dismantle an Atomic Bomb by the band U2. I picked this record for a couple reasons. One is it might be my favorite modern U2 record. It's hard to beat Unforgettable Fire for me. Uh, this one is full of Line 6 sounds and tech. So the Edge, big user of all this. The Pod Pros live, the delay units, basically Line 6 powered tons and tons of how these songs were written, created, performed live, yeah, when you listen to this, the tones are incredible. Go listen to Vertigo, listen to my favorite track, City of Blinding Lights. Um, they're just all really good. Crumbs from your table. Yeah, all because of you. You're hearing line six on this and you probably never knew it. It's a really great record. And I think this is a good U2 record for people who don't care for U2. I know there's a lot of you out there. So check this out. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Thanks so much for watching this. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope that you realize that, you know, the Line 6 pod's probably not for you. It's not usable. It's basically trash. In the comments below, let me know your favorite jam or let me know the jam you hated most because that would kind of be your favorite. Because whatever you hate the most means you actually kind of liked it. I think, something like that. Hit like, subscribe, click the bell icon to get notifications of future episodes. If you want to jam along with these pod jams, I know you do, you can play your pod with my pod down in the link below in the description. 
Over at BandLab, you can download all these stems. Go to thejhsshow.com for some stuff like merch and join our Patreon for the preservation of pedal history. Go be a member over there. That's it. Thanks so much for watching. Have a good day. Play your pod. Maybe dig it out of the trash. Yeah, it's in the trash, I think. It's in your closet. Bye.